lesson is going to be on Envisions 2.4 and 2.5 for fifth grade math. 2.4 is adding decimals with standard algorithm and 2.5 is subtracting. So I'm kind of bringing those together. The students should have their math diary with them. If not, I encourage you to remind them to take it home. And our steps are, the very first thing is line up the decimals. The most, um, the biggest problem that I have found, especially with students um, after school, is that they were not lining up the decimals first. Then you need to put your numbers in the correct location. Those are the two biggest problems. Then fill in the zeros and any blanks, add or subtract, and then bring down the decimal. So line up your decimals, put the numbers in the correct location, fill in the zeros and blank spots, add or subtract, and bring down the decimal. Now I did tell the students that it might be beneficial to do this on paper, um, so that way you can kind of line up, you can use the lines to help you keep your information organized. So we have four and seven tenths minus three and one tenths. So step number one is to put those decimals down. Step number two is to line up the decimals. So notice my four is in the one spot along with my three, my seven is in the 10 spot along with my one. I don't have anything that I need to fill a zero with. I'll show you what I mean with that. And now you just add. Seven plus one is eight, four plus three is seven, bring down your decimal. And your answer is seven and eight tenths. That one was pretty easy. They can get a little bit trickier if we have one and 39 hundredths plus two and eight tenths. Now this is where you will see me have to fill in a zero. So the very first thing, put those decimals down. Now put your numbers in the correct spot. And do you see how I have a blank? I need to put a zero there. I have to make sure that every, I, I told the students, every number needs a button. Now I can add, nine plus zero is nine, eight plus three is 11, and then two plus one is three, plus one is four, bring down your decimal, and your answer is four and 19 hundredths. This gets a little bit harder um, if they have a whole number, so I will show you, so the students might see this. So you have 22 and 3 tenths plus 5. What I explained to the students is this is like money. If I told someone I was bringing them $5, you can write it like that, or you can write it like this. But the key is the decimal comes at the end of the number. And so I always tell the students, Hey, I don't see a decimal, it's invisible. Where is it? It's invisible at the end. That is probably the biggest issue that I've seen. So put your decimals down first. Now this is 22, oops, 22 and then a three. And then this is five. So you have 22.3 and then five. There's a lot of numbers missing here. So every number has to have a partner. So this would be almost like saying $22.30, and this would be like saying $5. So that is a big issue that I see. Put your decimals down first, decimals down, and then I just fill it in, 22.3. That I think most of the students can do. It's when there's no decimal that they forget and they kind of want to move that five. No, it's five, five invisible decimal, five invisible decimal. Okay, now you can add it up. So three, seven, and two, bring down your decimal. And your answer is 27 and three tenths. Let's try one more like that. This time I'll do like a three digit number. Um, we'll do three point one. Okay. So I have 13 and 76 hundredths plus five plus three and one tenths. 
So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to line up my decimals. Always, always, always. Now I'm just gonna plug it in. This one is 13.76. Okay, I did that. I can check that off. This is a five. Oh, I don't see a decimal. That means it's invisible at the end. So five decimal. And then this is 3.1, so 3.1. Now you need to fill in your zeros, make sure everything has a zero. Most of the time, the students just make mistakes if they have a whole number without a decimal, or they're just not lining it up correctly. So six plus zero is six, seven plus one is eight. So here we have eight, nine, 10, 11, and then two. So I have 21 and 86 hundredths. So that is how you add. To subtract, it is the exact same thing. There is no difference. It is still the same thing. So you could have 1.12 subtract um, 35 hundredths. So we have 1 and 12 hundredths minus 35 hundredths. Same thing, put your decimals down, 1, 12 minus 0 and then 3, 5. The same thing. Now what I tell the students is if they need to, cover it up. I cannot do 2 minus 5. So I'm going to borrow from my 1, make him a 0. Now I have 12. Oh, good. I can do 12 minus 5. That's 7. Oh, I cannot do 0 minus 3. So I need to borrow again, but now I have 10. So 10 minus 3 is 7, oh, and 0 minus 0 is 0. There we go. So it is the exact same. So we can try a few more. So I have 50 and 12 hundredths minus 32 and 9 tenths. Once again, put those decimals down. 50, 12, and then 32, 9. Fill in any missing zeros. Now I spaced mine kind of far apart. You don't necessarily have to do that. Two minus zero is two. Oh no, I cannot do one minus nine. But I also can't borrow from somebody who has nothing. So I have to borrow from my five, make that a four. Now I have 10, okay? Uh, I still can't do one minus nine. Oh, but now they have 10. So now that's a nine and now I have 11. Usually the kids have a hard time subtracting across zeros. So now 11 minus nine is two, nine minus two is seven, and four minus three is one. Bring down your decimal and your answer is 17 and 22 hundredths. Once again, you could have six minus um, 71 hundredths. So we have six minus 71 hundredths. I don't see a decimal here. That means it's at the end. So go ahead and put your decimals down. So six decimal. And then now fill in this one. And look, you can quickly see where you need to fill in your zeros. I cannot do one minus zero. I also can't borrow from a zero. So I have to borrow from my six, make him a five. Now he's a 10. Oh, I still can't do zero minus one. But now that he's a 10, I can borrow, and now I make him a 10. So 10 minus 1 is 9, 9 minus 7 is 2, 5 minus 0 is 5, and then put your decimal. So the biggest problems that the students have are not lining up the decimals first. And usually if it's a whole number, they forget that the decimal is at the end. So please let me know um, if you need any more help with that. I do believe if the students take home their math diaries, if they line up the decimals first and then fill it in, they will do better. The students that I saw that were get, having the mistakes, they weren't lining it up correctly, or if they were, it was just addition and subtraction problems. So that is how you add and subtract decimals. Line up the decimals first. Fill in the numbers correctly. Then add or subtract. Um, make sure you add in any of those zeros, then bring down your decimal after you add and subtract. So yes, fill in those zeros, make sure that the decimals are lined up, and then I think you should be good.